Uh, give him another round of applause. All righty. Well, we're running. We're running. We're running almost on time here. So we're going to, um, I've got, uh, when Stan told me about this water filtration system that he's talking to us, uh, this guy's been around the industry for over 30 years. And he actually, he actually developed the filtration system for the White House. He lives in Maryland. And can you imagine what you have to go through to be able to do the water filtration for the White House? Do you know the scrutiny that you have to be put through? Well, this man, <laughs> he was telling me a little bit about it. So I just wanted to bring him out on stage. His name is Michael Patterson. I'd like to bring him out right now. This man has been through so much scrutiny. He's got the best water filtration that you can ever imagine. I just wanted to ask him a few questions. Welcome. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Come on, everybody. Give him a round of applause. We heard him yesterday a little bit. But Michael, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, speaking for the distributors, we've got two, two major issues with, with one with well water and one with city water. How does your filtration systems address that and what have you noticed from your experience over the last 30 years sure. on addressing those two? Well, basically you boiled it down to the two most often asked questions that we have. If I was to, don't, don't stick your hands up, but ask how many people are on well water, about 25% of you would stick your hand up and clearly the balance would be on city water. And the big difference is, on city water, the municipality does the best they can with their limited funds to provide water that they've developed a protocol for, which are standards developed by programs called risk assessment. Anybody ever hear about risk assessment out there with those water standards? Basically what they're doing is they're trying to figure out how much is too much for the kind of money that we have to spend to clean your water. And with that, they are usually run a real simple test every day. They look at the water and if they find a problem, their main answer is called solution by dilution. They'll just add water from a nearby municipality to get the, it down to what's known as maximum contamination limit, under that limit. But the word contamination is what rings in my ears. You really don't want any of that if you can help it. So with on city water, we've developed a system that can handle in nearly every city that we're going to come across one system. But you had a second question about well water, right? Exactly. You bet. Okay. Well water is, unfortunately, it can be the best or the worst. Some water's thousands of years underground. But the chemicals that they can come in contact with, you never know when they got there. And there are three major issues. You have microbiological, you have organic and inorganic. And you really want to hope that none of these show up. But because a well water can change daily, it's generally best to have something to accommodate all three. We've got that as well. Awesome, awesome. Let me ask you a question on the White House, just out of, just out of curiosity. What did it take to get in there and, and, and perform the, the filtration system and so forth for them? Well, I had worked with NASA, and uh, when they had their 25th anniversary, uh, they screened 30,000 companies to get 30 to walk on the hill and talk to their space science and technology committee. We were one of those 30. And the Secret Service had somebody there that said, oh, we should look into this. And short story, they're the guys that do all the work and put it in. They have their own technical support unit down in Fort Belvoir. And if you can pass the muster, then they bring you on board. And that's about all I can talk about. <laughs> wow, isn't that cool? So, you know, folks, I, I invested in a system. I have it, and I got to tell you, when I, when I tasted the water, and I made sure I tasted the water before, and I tasted the water afterwards, I mean, I've, I've, when I started, because I put out a lot of water to people, and when I was putting out the water the next day, people said, did you do something different? Because the water you gave me two days ago didn't taste this good. I can't tell you how grateful we are to have this kind of talent to help us take care of the filtration systems needs that we come across as distributors. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate you. Yes. Thank you very and much. Thank you. I'll be here tomorrow explaining exactly more in detail. And he'll thank be you very out, much. He'll be also be out there by 6-8 Tools answering your questions as well. Thank you, guys. Have a good week. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. I just want to give a shout-out about the raffles. Um, we have a limited, we only had so many tickets to do raffles with, and we have a limited amount of tickets left to do raffles. So if you want to get in on the raffles, we have a few left back at 6A Tools. Again, the raffle is uh, 10 tickets for $20 and one ticket for five. Jason's in the back of the room right now with the remaining raffle tickets that are left for that platinum unit. They're going really fast. So if you guys want to jump in on it, 
do it. And again, make sure when you write your name, address, and phone number on the back, if you're not going to be here, we want, we, if we can't read the name, address, and phone number, we won't be able to get your machine to you if you're not here tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Um, I'm a pet lover. Who's a pet, who, who, who pet lovers? What are the pet lovers in this room? You know, people will spend more money on their animals than they will on their own health. Who agrees with that? Isn't that, isn't that true? And I'll tell you, um, I've had some great experience with animals over my lifetime, and, and Dr. Crow is going to share an experience that I had recently with my good friends, Rob and Timmy. Actually, they're out there in West, Spring, West Virginia right now. I just want to give a shout out to them over the internet. We miss you here, Rob and Tammy. But uh, Rob and Tammy helped me out with a little animal uh, a little cat and that was thrown out of a window of a car, two weeks old. And uh, anyway, I'm going to bring this gentleman out. Where's Dr. Crow? Come on here, Dr. Crow. Because when that happened, I consulted this guy, Dr. Crow. And uh, what a magnificent person and what the best vet in the world. So we're going we're gonna to turn it over to you for a second. Awesome. Thank you. No, you're, you're good there. You're I'm hot. good again. You're hot. Yep, you're hot. Let's see. If I can make this work. Uh, still, uh, there we go. I gotta tell you a little bit about how I got started. I was a, a working cowboy for many years, and I got dehydrated a lot. Uh, you know, uh, the clouds, of course, are coming in, but the rain's not coming down. It's just out there, and the clouds are there. I've got a working horse. Uh, you know, it's like that little horse is, uh, also we work a lot with, uh, the areas of, um, uh, water that are just kind of like always. Have you ever heard that song about uh, you know cool water and how well you can be dry and all? And uh, so I did get into water just from dehydration. And uh, of course, you know uh, I'm just this is where I got started working cattle, uh, seeing that the cattle were also dry. You know like. Stan said I had to be a little bit short on the, call, on the singing, so I better just get onto it here. Uh, but seriously, uh, I'm a part of the Institute of Health Management and Mass Destruction Defense. That's a lot to do with disaster. And I am pleased to report that the Kangan Water Unit is actually published in two uh, unit uh, articles uh, related to disaster management with when we're going to need water. And uh, it's very powerful. And uh, I'm with, again, the College of Public Health, the University of Georgia. Uh, that, and I'm just kind of on the fringe of it, though, because most of my spend my time as chief of surgery there in critical care, and uh, that's in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then I'm with them as a medical director for hyperbaric oxygen here in Florida. And then uh, I'm a captain of fire safety officer uh, with my Oconee County Fire. And so I kind of play all these hats. And do I get dehydrated sometimes? And I'm sure that all you do, too. And, and I just uh, bless you for getting into the water, which I got into it kind of secondarily as you guys have all been working with it for a while. And uh, I, of course, have to give a lot of glory to God. Uh, we talk about spirituality. We got to say that. Uh, you know, just think about our, our universe and just looking at a cloud. A cloud weighs two, uh, point two, uh, over 220 billion pounds, one billion kilograms, just one cloud that's cumulus. And the, our oceans, of course, 71% uh, of our Earth's surface is water. And 69% of all that water is in ice. And if it melted at suddenly all of it, just think, we'd be underwater, the entire Earth would be underwater 2.7 kilograms higher than the entire surface of all the Earth. Isn't it amazing the creation and the water. So, you know, it all started, of course, with Genesis, with let there be light and the first day. And guess what? That light is all of the electromagnetic spectrum. That's everything, not just visible light. All the way down to when animals were made, they were made before us. And of course, then we have man at sixth day. And of course, then the good Lord had his rest. Guess what? 
This is important to remember the rest, and I just still don't get enough of it yet. I know, and a lot of you don't either. Many investigations have been done with water, and water makes up, and I crossed that out, we used to say 65 to 85 percent of our body is associated with water. When Gerald Pollack and I were getting together and him talking about it, and him, I just realized, and he realized this, he's a water scientist, he said, no, Tim, we're like more to over 90 plus percent water, 95 in muscle, and that's because all of the interactions with all the other molecules are related to water. So that's not maybe we're not just, you know, in med include bone and tissues and all forth. And he talks about the fourth phase of water, what was Dr. McKnight was talking about earlier, the crystalline water, the hydrogel water. And it's like the light transfers better and the protons transfer better, 40 times faster, as he mentioned. And the layers are enzymes. It's not a substrate and an enzyme. It's that there's about 10 layers of water between an enzyme and the substrate. Didn't know that. You know, when we go to vet school, med school, and all that, we think about all this stuff about interaction with enzymes and substrates. Well, now we know it's water-related. And if the better the water, the better off we're going to have a transfer. And so the water molecules are important because of the channels that are important for the light. I spend a lot of my time in the operating room. Uh, this is at the Regional Institute of Veterinary Emergencies and Referrals, caring for sick animals and injured pets 24-7. That's how I really got involved with the water. I have a dear friend, his name is Dr. Ray Stewart. I don't know if Ray is here, but he's the guy that got me started. He's the chiropractor. He got me going in the water, said, Tim, I think you'll like this water. And then with another friend, uh, doctor, another doctor that's a veterinarian, that he, he got me going. And that was about three and a half years ago. And you know, pets and owners are just such a bond. And here's a lady bringing in her older dog who is around 15 years old. And she, he, she's got degenerative diseases and arthritis. And we're using a little loop right here. That little targeted loop is to help us with, with pain. And uh, it sends out a signal. But if the patient's dehydrated, then that signal is going to get through, just like with the water transfer of light through water. And so she's happier because her little beagle now is working along with the loop and getting better with the hydration with the, with the, uh, the 11.5 water that's used for a soak around that leg. And then also the, the water that she's on is 9.5. Pets, most all pets can handle, again, the 9.5, but you've got to go a little slower with them sometimes. Uh, remember they have a metabolic rate that is at least seven times faster than ours. And when you send home an owner with the water for their pet, and this is what I've seen so often, the pet starts to act better faster, and they start running around quicker, like this little, little beagle. Isn't she cute, you know? And then the owner, she says, wow, my beagle is running around like he's now, he's, uh, that, he's old, but now he's running around like he's much younger. That's the first thing I usually hear, almost on a daily basis in the practice where we are, and I see that all the time. And I spend time getting dehydrated as a firefighter. And I mentioned the story to you earlier about several of the firefighter friends that I've had in which they've been in, really in trouble because they still aren't quite listening to old Doc talk about water yet, but they're getting there. And this is an old slide, and I don't know if it shows up, but that's a bottle of water in my hand, you know. But now it has Kangen water in it. Yeah. And we had a firefighter that was going down, and he was out, and we started an IV on him because he'd been really hyperthermic, and uh, hyperthermic is, you know, re is getting super hot. Uh, and we had to take all of his gear off of Keris and he started an IV on him. And then I ran to my truck and got some water, started giving him the water, trickled it in. I told you that story, but I want to tell you it again. It's important because he gets hydrated much faster. And yes, and we spend time in EMS as well. This is a 45 car pileup on I-75. And uh, there were a lot of people that are working as, health, as first responders getting dehydrated. And so it's important to try to get everyone. So when you guys go out, Talk to your first responders, talk to your firefighters, and your vets, of course. And, of course, everyone that's got a pet. And uh, just remember this when it comes to the cells. The physiology is the same as a human cell or an animal cell. Even the animal cell, those moving faster. 
The metabolic rates are quicker. We have about 10 trillion cells per 10 kilograms of body weight. So most of us here are probably got 70 trillion cells in our body. And one million molecular changes occur per cell per second. Think about that. Every cell has a million molecular changes that occur every second. And there's this all about then these radicals that are formed when there's a lack of oxygen. And there's chronically a lack of oxygen. We're not as efficient as a machine. And then we have acidosis, where the buildup of acid, like you talk about lactic acid for the, you know, us that are working hard, uh, but at the same time it happens with all of us, we get acidemic. And we get all the inflama at least inflammation, toxic and aging. And you've heard this story before about how it's linked to cancer. Pets have, again, a 7 to 10 percent, 10 times faster metabolic rate. So they get cancer quicker. They actually then respond quicker on the other end. So if you can save their cells, they're a sentinel for human disease. And we see 60 times more cancer in our pets. Let's say let one, one may be malignant tumors like mass and breast cancer. And so that really is an, an important area that we can help our pets stay better, stay healthier, longer, and if we can get them on the water quicker. And again, that means that we have seven to 10 times more cancer. In some, most cancers, it's at least seven to 10 times more cancer. They're closer to the ground. They're smelling the ground. Uh, they're taking up all the, the toxic materials that are in the ground, as well as, of course, the water. And so let's look at just cellular division for a minute with any cell. And we have about, in, our, in the body, we have a roughly around 2,500, you know, 25 million, I should say, a mitosis cells division per second. 25 million every second with cellular division. And this is, this is a little slide from the Hughes Institute uh, that looks at crystalline water. And look at that. The water is darker in certain areas around this, and this is the more solid water. And let's see if we can make that work. This is, uh, this is the hydrogel water is all around here. And we're going to like to see if we can make that uh, function with movement of that water. And uh, so I guess we couldn't. Uh, but that's, that's one of those things. I was showing cell division. If we can get the cell division that just shows the cell division, you'd see it again. It's so rapid. You know, 25 million that happen every second. And uh, I guess he's trying to move on. I'm looking at the monitor here. He's got that. Let's see if we can make it work. No. Oh. He's trying to get it so it divides. There he goes. Now he'll shine it back up here for you. Watch this. I'm going to be quiet. Dividing. 25 million per second. That's how, the inner, how we then are influence our bodies on a second by second basis. Pets and water consumption, I have to talk about that, they can smell the chlorine in the water. The chlorine, when you touch it with a little protein in the mouth, it turns to chloroform or a branch of trichloromethane. That causes cancer. That happens with anything that's chlorinated leads to dehydration. These pets can smell that. And I've uh, had a blessing to reach out and meet a lot of you over the course of the last you know, 48 hours. And I had one lady, I don't remember her name, but she said, my cat's drinking twice as much water as it used to. And she said, is that okay? I said, absolutely. That meant he was really dehydrated before drinking the course of tap water. Leads to less blood flow leads to less oxygenation, leads to chronic cell changes, leads to increase in the reactive oxidant species, more of a uh, scientific name for the reactive oxidant species is certainly the superoxide radicals. And then the scavenging is done, of course, with the water. And that leads to inflammation. And here's a dog that has a ruptured disc. And that disc is up there because it's dehydrated disc. It's not like a moving disc like it used to. 
And here's the dog. His name is Samson. That was his uh, CT scan. And he came in uh, obese with abdominal pain. And initially, he didn't r arrive uh, just a pain from the referring vet. But he wasn't quite sure about his back. By the time he got to us, he was paralyzed. The disc rupture into the cord area, and then he is paralyzed in the rear legs. He can't walk. Well, as you can imagine, he's, something else is going to have to be done besides just giving him, you know, electrolyzed, reduced water, tangent water. But in the beginning of his therapy, he starts on the antioxidants we know about. And so here's that CT scan, a little bit bigger up so you can see it a little better. There's the disc. Here's this cord pushed way up. Here's the medema all the way around here. And then the, what we do with this is just a model to show what we do is take a, a piece of uh, bone out and we then re give the cord a lot of room to breathe, if you will, and remove the disc material. So here we are. We're doing the surgery and I always ask, what can I always do to improve my outcome with my patients? Now, when it comes to post-operatively, we want to hydrate them. So as you go talking to veterinarians, make sure you talk about how much, of course, of it is, as this surgeon, board-certified surgeon, has been doing this for, I'm an eminent, uh, you know, I've been doing it for over 30 years as a surgeon now, and I can't tell you enough how important it is for the water first. Yeah, of course, the food's next, the nutrition, and then the pain control, and, and it leads to electrolyzed, reduced water. And here we are going home. We're starting to walk a little better. Notice the owner has a, uh, that's a styrofoam cup. I'm sorry about that. But uh, it's, it, it, and he's getting the machine and the water and he's taking home the water and he's taking home, he's happier and he's getting some gallons of jugs to go home with him and the dog's happy and I'm pleased to report he made a full recovery. Okay, he made a full recovery. And we, we also use another tool, it's called hyperbaric oxygen, and we put the patient in the chamber, and it reoxygenates the cord as well. But it also produces reactive oxygen species, those superoxide radicals we talk about. And here is the elect, electrolyzed, electrolyzed reduced water. You have to talk about it as a scientific term is electrolyzed reduced water when you're talking to your vets, because that's what they'll go to PubMed, and they'll look at PubMed.gov. They'll print up electrolyzed reduced water, they'll type it up, and then they'll see essentially what it is. That is, uh, the water is used as a oxygen, reactive oxygen species scavenger. And here's a couple dogs. Aren't they funny? You know, right? Now, you know, and, and we're always economical in veterinary medicine. What's the best thing I can do economically for my patients is put them on the water. And here we are, though, there's two riding together, we call it a ride-along. I'm not sure what's, who's, who's uh, really driving the bus here, but this is the hyperbaric chamber here. All right? So we got a happy owner, and we got a, certainly a happy surgeon because he's got the water. And guess what? I start to go drink the water right away coming out of that operating room. Okay. We have general guidelines we want to actually bring to you, and that is you start with 8.5, and that's because most animals are somewhat toxic, and some, if you start them right away at 9.5, we see a diarrhea. Not all the time, but boy, in somebody's house, you don't want that dog to run around with diarrhea all over it. So it spoils the whole situation. So you go, <laughs> yeah. and so you always do this. You place and use glass or ceramic. Actually, metal bowls are probably not the best either because they take actually electromagnetic radiation. It's not all good radiation, it's microwave. Some of it's microwave radiation and it goes into the bowl and it acts like a radar dish. So go back to utilizing things that are glass or ceramic. Then change to 9.5, and then go to nine, after you go to 9.5 for nine a week, then 9.5 for a week. If they stop and they start to feel a little bit like a little diarrhea comes on or something, stay right there and don't move it. Go back to where you were. And those with cancer and severe inflammatory disease We'll add a little tiny bit of 11.5 uh, in a kilogram basis. You know, we're using like a one ounce per 10 kilograms. That's not very much. Uh, and of course, if they're using the jugs and taking them home, the water in those jugs, as you know, it's shaking around and they're going to lose their ORP fairly quickly. So it's really important to get them on fresh Kangen water as soon as possible because it provides that free hydrogen based electrons. And so you could do some energy testing with that. We don't have time to work into that as well today, but we just you can imagine that water essentially is a vibra vibration medicine. It's a vibrating structure. 
And so, as you just test for it, you can do that. And so some of us that are doing in the biophysics side of medicine, you can test to see which water to start them on. Here's Samson. He's 11 years old. He had bone cancer. So that's the second Samson. He's got bone cancer. And in April 2012, he started limping. The owner finally got a diagnosis made with a thickened bone and in May, and he started drinking the water. They found me, and he started drinking the water June of last year. Does it go back? Let's see. Nope. Oh. Okay. And in uh, August 2012, he had a, it was a very happy owner because he's now starting to not limp. He's starting to walk around, yet he's got a tumor. And he's so old that, uh, that he's, you know, he's an older log. He's an 11. He's not that old. But at the same time, he's got a very aggressive tumor. And the tumor started to stop growing. You hear that, what I said? Stop growing. And we could tell physically that he was working very well and good. And then around... Almost, again, a year later or so, he started having lameness. It suddenly got worse. We don't know all the things about science, do we? And he suddenly got worse, and that tumor started growing rapidly. And then another month later, he was euthanized. So he's now with the Lord just a couple weeks ago. And uh, his average, average sarcoma, the average sarcoma length of time that an animal lives without the leg amputated, and the reason he didn't have one amputated is because he had a lot of arthritis. Oh, but that helped too. He was running around a lot. Oh, and he was happy. He was just, you know, panting and happy and just really, really caring well. Well, he lasted more than any dog. On chemotherapy, you get six months at the most. And he went, well, what's that? Way over a year, 15, almost 15 months. And here's Milton. Milton's a 20, lived through 20 years of age with two years of chronic kidney disease. And Grace, the owner, she said, I, I started the dog, the kitty on the water, and uh, the kitty's starting to run around like a 10-year-old. She calls me up and says that. Dr. Crow, you won't believe it, but my little cat that you started on the water is running around and jumping up with a couch and doing all those things they never used to do since he's been 10. Now he's 18. Well, he lived two more years. Yeah, yeah, two more years. Happy years. And so we see these con clinic, common clinical conditions, and de de like I said last night, yesterday, they don't have a placebo effect. There's nothing else that will make them work. So it's, got, it's, it's very, very important that the chronic renal failure, the chronic liver disease, the uh, uh, mammary gland carcinoma, you know, these are tumors, prostatic disease, degenerative joint diseases, asthma, pneumonia, heart disease, Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, big disease that has to do with fighting and breaking down the red cells. Degenerative disc disease, like we showed with Samson. Some of those animals, when you first early get the diagnosis and you put them on the Kangen water, they don't need to have and rupture their discs. They rehydrate. And then they start feeling a lot better. And then they don't come to have to come to me. And the common clinical conditions, like we see so many animals that still get hit by a car. And they got bumps and bruises, of course, so they may have something else. Snake bite, uh, you know, and we see burns. Uh, the burn patients do very well with the pain. You know how important a burn is for pain? To help take care of the pain, we put 11.5 on the water. And I say from doc, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Horst, you know, my friend Horst, he's talking about also, Horst Alter talks about using 11.5 on the burns as well for humans. And then foreign bodies, we remove them. You know, dental and ear diseases are common, and bowel disease and eye and conjunctival infections. And it brings me to Maggie. This is Brian Welch's little kitty. Isn't she cute? Even at a, a couple, you know, 10 days old or so, she's got uh, eyes that are just barely getting open because he was able to use the 2.5 water to get their, their eyes open. I guess uh, one of her, his friends found the little kitty alongside the road. And of course, the nose was all kinked up with a lot of pus. And the cat kitty was, I won't show you the other end because it was even worse looking, but they had maggots all the way through that cat. Very toxic, very toxic. So squirting that 2.5 water up into those maggot holes made it really, those maggots just come out, uh, the, the infection that's involved. Remember, there's no bacteria, no virus, 
You know, no, nothing like that that actually withstands 2.5 water. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So here's Maggie. Isn't she cute? With her eyes open and doing well? Brian, thank you for uh, sharing that with us. And of course, we, we know that true joy and happiness comes when we can really help our little animals like that. And so here's Maggie today, uh, or yet yeah, two days ago when he took this picture. And you can see, who is the happiest? I don't know. I think they're both very, very, very happy, you know. And let's look at what's going on with her at this point. Uh, sorry about that. I guess that picture didn't show up. Well, we'll go on. But Maggie has got some other thing related to potentially an eye situation in which I just told Brian to go ahead and start soaking the eye area with 11.5 to get the antioxidant available into that tissue because it could be still left over from a meibomian gland that is stuck and it's got a little swelling there. So he's going to go for that. We see severe wounds. I mean, I had to show you some bad wound. I'm a surgeon, okay? Sorry. All right, I know it looks ugly. And we see severe wounds. The first thing you do as a pet owner is to, of course, said, cover that wound. It's bad bacteria. There could be MRSA, methicillin-resistant staph that we get. And we also see severe contamination. Severe infection leads from that contamination. We see shock, dehydration. Can you think of things you can use out of your machine for that? Absolutely, right? Okay, we're going to quote low, the, the ox, electrolyzed, oxidized water, low pH, 2.5, nano-clustered, or essentially it is, you know, declustered, and that is gets the uh, water into the tissues to help rehydrate. And we know that infection is related to dehydrated tissues. So you're going to rehydrate the tissues, use something that's going to kill the bacteria, stop the bleeding, put some pressure on it, and then use the, you know, an acupuncture point of LI11 right here in the arm is very good for animals. Any kind of critical L crisis situation, LI11 right here, it helps calm them. And then, uh, then also Governor Vessel 26 for, for resuscitation, you know, and that helps there. And then the anesthesia and, of course, in the surgery that we do. And, this, of course, we're getting pre prepped up in surgery to do a, a bad wound case. Because remember, again, electrolyzed, oxidized water, the scientific term of what you're using, which is the low pH, the 2.5 water, is kills viruses, kills bacteria, kills fungus, it's used for irrigation, so there'll be a severe wound like the, isn't that wound better now? Remember that wound? Yes, we had to do a flap and irrigate all out, and it's, but that's all we got left, and that was just taken this last week. All right. These wounds just amazingly do so much better. And then we use it also in the dentistry, uh, for oral infections, for the bad burns we talked about. In the burn situation, the burn wound is infected, we use the 2.5. Then follow it with the 11 Five. On traumatic wounds, same thing. Again, we do the same thing. Use infected wounds again and follow it again with 11.5. And so head injuries, I have to tell a little bit about that. Hydration plays such a big role in head injuries. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us veterinarians, when we learn to give fluids and fluids and fluids, it makes the brain a little more swollen, swollen, swollen. So we need to be able to, of course, do things to help. This is oxygen going into the patient. We're watching his pulse oximetry. That's something we use for oxygen to monitor oxygen levels. And it's really interesting when we start trickling in water on some of these patients, how their oxygen levels, you can measure, and they're going up. It's like blood pressure going down because they've got more flow. You see the oxygenation going up. And then here's what a little dog, his name is Sally. Her name is Sally. And she had half of her face almost removed uh, by a... Uh, a a, a machine, a farm machinery, just take off half of her face. But she's the happiest little pup because, again, we use 11.5 after we use the 2.5, and we did that frequently, and she's just the happiest little girl. She just has one part of her nose, but she doesn't know that. She's just the happiest little girl all together around. And then the, there, here's a little, just a wound. A simple little wound can turn into a bad thing. So a little itching, whatever, a little bit of a inflammation in the skin. Start with 2.5, uh, apply the 11.5, then go back to 6.5 or to 8.5, somewhere in there, depending on, and then drinking the 9.5, and do that frequently. So here's Franklin. Franklin was itchy all over, and he was in for a knee surgery, but the lady, I noticed there was, he was itching all over. He's just like, 
What's going on? Well, he's allergic. We find out with biophysics he's allergic to a couple of things like corn and wheat, and we get him off of those. And guess, do you think this lady is very intense about getting the water for her dog? Yeah. And it helped his arthritis as well, and that dog is moving so well. I just saw him last week, and he's doing so good again. And then she starts drinking the water too. All right. And she gets better. All right? And we get the performance animals that are just so into it, you know, and they're, they're, not, they're not fighters, but they sure are jumpers out here after, a, a, you know, a, a frisbee and out here going after uh, these uh, dog docks, uh, dog uh, jumps over the docks and so forth. Obesity is a killer for us in animal vet medicine as well. We see so many animals, 70% of some practices have pets that are overweight, just overweight. This is a dachshund that weighs 60 pounds. And, yeah, almost unheard of. The dog couldn't hardly walk and had ruptured the ligament in the knee, and the other knee was also bad. So what do we do with those now? Because we know that fat is pro-inflammatory. It really injures a lot of muscular skeletal tissue. It's hard on the heart, and, of course, we know it's pro-inflammatory with all those fat cells that are carrying on the inflammation. It's like having... You know, I'm a firefighter, so if I look at a little tiny fire, you know, it's a little tiny build thing on fire, great. That's not too bad. We hose, that's it. But you get these kind with get inflammation in them, and it's like a big, huge forest fire. So it's really important to get them on the weight reduction programs. We use a, a lot of beans uh, in, along with their food just to kind of decrease it, of course. And then we always have them on 9-5 water, and they continue with that as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a process that we all have to work on. So again, to convince your vets, go to pubmed.gov. You know, look at the subject heading. Electrolyzed reduced water, that's what you're going to type in the subject heading. Electrolyzed oxidized water, that's again the killing water, the one for the killing of all the bacteria. Print these articles up, make copies, and then give the copies to the docs, give the copies to their technicians, Email them and say, how well did you do? Find out how well they did. Discuss those briefly. And again, give them the copies that you may have used a hot yellow highlighter that you've done that. And then, again, use the brochures that we have made that help us all the way around, as you know, all that DVD and the brochures that you use. So look at some of the scientific articles yourself and understand them. They're not that difficult, as you will. Here's the journal Biomed Center. And, of course, it was published, Neuroprotective Effects of electrolyzed reduced water and its model for water containing, again, mo molecular hydrogen, and it has uh, the uh, platinum that's monoparticle platinum. That's why it's really stabilizing those electrons. So this was published out of a university called, again, uh, Kishu, uh, Kishu University out of Fukuoka, Japan, and the experiment involved neurotesting, of course, these mice under oxidative stress, and they found that it was a, a scavenger. It's an intracellular scavenger of reactive oxygen species. It did that. It was a neuroprotective effect, uh, profound and out of a scientific journal. Then it's okay to give them a background. You know, Doc, are you familiar with what's been going on in the area of injury with these reactive oxygen species? You can talk to them about it. Well, here's what it says. And just yellow highlight it again, just to make sure. So here's, it represents, the brain represents only 2% of, uh, of the tissue, but 20% of the blood oxygen goes there, consumes that, and 25% of all the glucose is produced there. For that reason, the brain is considered the most vulnerable part of the body against reactive oxygen species, and by a byproduct, of a byproduct of aerobic metabolism, so we get oxidative stress, it's related to the series of brain dysfunction disorders. And in people, and I, I just parentheses that, in people, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, the electrolyte reduced water is a function of, again, drinking containing the molecular hydrogen, small amount of, of, of platinum nanoparticles, known to scavenge. Give them those articles because we know that then the oxygen, da oxygen damage is going to be a lot less. And we see so many dogs that have seizures now. We see animals that, again, they're what are showing our environment. And so do what we can to be able to get them through their seizures by, again, giving them electrolyzed reduced water. So in summary, we have, some, we have a tool, you have a tool. 
It's probably one of the most profound tools, I think, that the whole earth, the whole world has. And you are all pioneers in being able to present this to your friends, to anyone who has a pet. I mean, even including the pet turtle. Okay, they love them. You know, it's a little pet squirrel, pet, you know, anything that is, they're loving, and by them showing them the love by giving them the water, and then they see the difference. They see the difference in what that little animal is showing them. Uh, my granddaughter has a small, little, tiny uh, rat. It's been uh, he, her life, if you will, for a while, and uh, that rat's certainly not going to live all those many years, but she is learning to be, quote, the vet in the family as I leave, okay? And she's going to continue with what she knows about little electrolyzed reduced water for her little, uh, little tiny uh, rat that's now uh, growing and continue. By the way, I don't think I've seen a rat grow and uh, continue to kind of grow, but actually running around that wheel and running around all over the place like it's still just a very young rat. Now it's two and a half years old. It's amazing. So we see many pet diseases are associated with dehydration. We see that it's a very effective hydrator with 99% of all our molecular structure in our body containing or associated with water. It's just the way it is. And because of the unique hexagonal, if you will, nanostructuring that we see, nanoclustering, the most like a hydrogel water in the cell, we know that it's so important for us to know what? To get them on the water. Because it is a free electron donor as well, it consumes, it's a, it consumes our reactive oxygen species, essentially. And it's because the pets have a faster metabolism and a shorter life, and they are a sentinel for us all, when we then show the difference with electrolyzed reduced water, with the Kangen water, we see that they, can you see this dog? I took a picture of him and I know he just had the water. I want some more. And we have a smart little kitty here that's even looking at the, this is, this is Maggie again when she was younger. And then look at that, kink and water. She's looking right straight at it and she wants it. And the, this, is, this is Bama, the dog's name is Bama. And this dog was paralyzed. She had a disc that was ruptured. She came in wobbly and then went fully paralyzed, all four legs. We got Pam on the water. We got the whole family on the water. Family has issues as well, as all do. And as a family, they got better. And then I'm pleased to say that Bam is running around again. She's running around again. So if I had time, I'd say for questions, we'll have those later. Uh, there's my email address. If anybody would like to, they can have that. Uh, just, that's tcrowdbm at gmail.com. And my cell number is 706-296-7020. I don't mind sharing things with you all. And as you know, sometimes I spend some time on the phone. Sometimes I can't get to you right away. I'm stuck in an operating room or even fighting a situation like a fire. So yes, we are, all of us are like firefighters. We are carrying children out of a fire. What's going on here is that we're carrying our family, our pets, out of a situation of smoke, of toxicity, of reactive oxygen species, and that water's going to do it for us. Thank you so much. I really had a chance talking with you. All right, all right. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. I so appreciate it. Come step out here for a second. Uh, come on, everyone. Give it up for Dr. Crow. Come on. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm so proud. Uh, I got your card a uh, year, year and a half back. And uh, I live in Orlando. And where's your office at? Well, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is, my, this is my veterinarian. This is the man that I take my animals to all the way up there to his uh, office. Yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, you. We're so blessed once again to have a great man like Dr. Crow on board with us. And he's going to sign some DVDs and we're going to be
uh, pa uh, giving away on the raffle some of his DVDs. So we're going to have you sign. If you would for me, just sign a couple of okay, DVDs thanks. back here. Right. You got some Sharpies back here. All right. Thank you again, Dr. Crow. You, I just want to, uh, yes, come on, everybody, one more time. All right.